Hello students, welcome to your third video on ecology. Um, this one is all about brood parasitism. So it's sort of in addition to the last video, but brood parasitism is such a unique and interesting phenomenon that I just had to make another video to share about it. Um, brood parasitism is also what I did my research on in college, and so it's one of my little pet things that I just think is totally fascinating. So I'm going to share a little bit about it. Okay, so first we need to remember what parasitism is. So remember, parasitism is the process of a parasite depending on a host for at least part of its life cycle. The host is hurt by this relationship. So one is helped by the relationship and one is hurt by the relationship. Brood parasitism still has that interaction where one is hurt and one is help helped. Um, but brood parasitism occurs specifically with parental care. So it's just defined as the process of one organized organism parasitizing the parental care of another organism. Um, so the images down here sort of show this. Uh, brood parasitism happens most often in birds. Actually about 1% of bird species do brood, brood parasitism. Um, the images down here are of a type of cowbird um, called the cuckoo bird. What we notice down here is there's a nest and there's a bunch of eggs that are all the same. Those eggs all belong to a warbler. The warbler is the one on this side that is the smaller brown mother. Um, what happens is these cowbirds swoop in and they lay their eggs in the nest of the warbler. So this egg that looks different is actually a different species. Um, then what happens is that little spotted egg is the one that hatches first, and the baby is much larger than the rest of them, and so the cowbird baby pushes the rest of them out of the nest. In addition, this mom, the warbler mom, is able to feed the baby that killed the rest of her babies. She doesn't notice that it's not hers, even though it obviously looks very different. It just has all the cues to cause her to feed it. So what happens is that that cowbird is able to benefit from this relationship where the warbler obviously is hurt by this relationship. Um, this type of parasitism occurs behaviorally and so I want to talk about the only known example of obligate, obligate means you have to, of obligate brood parasitism in fish. There's only one example known and it's what I did my research on in college. Um, so there's a bunch of different players we have to talk about a little bit in order to really understand this system. And that's the case with most ecology. There's a lot of different things happening and they all come together to start to explain what's going on. Um, so first, cichlids. Uh, cichlid is a group of fish. It's gone adaptive radiation, which means there's many, 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 many different species of cichlid. And they have um, unique ways to survive. Um, in Lake Tanganyika, which is where um, the specific cichlids that I look at were, so Lake Tanganyika is down here in Africa, there's three what we call Rift Valley Lakes, they're really large, they're really deep, Lake Tanganyika is sort of the long skinny one. Um, down there, cichlids have gone through this adaptive radiation. Um, about one third of them do something called mouth brooding. So mouth brooding happens when they lay their eggs and they scoop them up into their mouth. They have a special pouch um, where they keep those eggs. Those eggs hatch inside their mouth. They stay inside the mouth until the young is, is old enough to be let out um, because the eggs are inside the mouth and the predators can't get to them. So it's a pretty, pretty nice system to keep the baby safe. Problem being, mouth brooding is really expensive for the parent. During the time the parent is mouth brooding, they can't eat, and so they have to save up a lot of nutrients and energy beforehand, um, and then they give that all the way to their, their babies while their babies are young. Okay, here's the predator. This species of catfish is called Cynodonus multipunctatus. Um, they're only about six inches long. They're pretty little, and they actually grow pretty well in aquariums. They're big in the aquarium trade. Um, but naturally, they they have to do this process of brood parasitism in order to reproduce. Um, so what they do is they swoop in while the cichlids are laying their eggs and they start to eat some of those eggs and they release their own eggs at the same time. So the cichlids are worried that their babies are being eaten, their eggs are getting destroyed, and so they scoop up all the eggs they can as fast as they can and part of that involves uh, scooping up some catfish eggs. 
Inside the mouth, the catfish young hatch first and they're gonna eat the cichlid eggs as their first meal. So we see right here, this was the cichlid egg. That is the actual egg of the mother. And then this is a very young, recently hatched um, catfish. So this is the parasite eating the, the actual young. Um, what ends up happening is that the, the cichlid mother takes care of a young from a totally different species. Um, it has killed her babies, so the host is harmed, um, and she puts a lot of parental care and a lot of energy into taking care of young that aren't even her own. I want to show you a video of this process. Um, it's actually factually kind of inaccurate in a lot of places, but it's some really cool footage, and so I want to show it to you. world out there so be careful she's saying a mouthful cichlid fish here in africa's lake tanganyika have a big problem with predators other fish will do whatever it takes to get cichlid babies and gobble them up just scaring them off isn't the answer the cichlid has to create a safe haven for its young using its mouth as both shovel and bucket then it moves its wriggling brood to safety, mouthful by mouthful. When they're not in the hole, the cichlid babies are in mom's mouth. That's why the cichlid are called mouth brooding fish. Mom's mouth is both nest and nursery. Like all good moms, this one lets her babies out to play and then provides protection when it's time to come home. It seems like a foolproof system for keeping the young ones safe. But it's not. Let's introduce a predator that is so wily, it's able to hijack the evolutionary process itself. These catfish are notorious parasites. They're after the eggs of the cichlid, but the cichlid fiercely defend their young. The catfish are able to pick off a few eggs, and they also drop a few of their own eggs, knowing that the cichlid mothers will pick them up, thinking they're her own. And so the cichlid becomes a surrogate mother to a predator. The catfish take off, never knowing what becomes of their young ones. Mother does her job, letting the brood grow in her mouth. Now, as in a bad horror movie, the catfish eggs hatch first. And the baby catfish feast on the cichlid babies, gobbling down every single one. Finally, the cichlid mother releases not her own children, but the catfish cannibal kitties. Ironically, the cichlid whose brood they destroyed is the only mother they'll ever know. More irony, the cichlid mom fails to sense the switch. She treats the catfish as if they were her own, scooping them up to protect them at the first hint of danger. The catfish have clearly won this round in the eternal fight for evolutionary dominance. All right, guys, so that's brood parasitism. Um, hopefully you've learned a little bit about it, about how totally fascinating it is. Um, that's what ecology is all about. It's about looking at relationships between organisms, relationships between organisms and their environment. Um, parasitism is just one example of a relationship between organisms.